let's actually take a minute to actually discuss what these neoliberal privatization reforms actually did and are doing down in Mexico in terms of things like the environment and climate change. Because that, I think, you know, we're kind of handling, we've been talking more about the kind of slimy side uh, of, of people, but there's actually a dangerous side to all this stuff. It's not just people making bank cor and corruption. It's, it, it's, it's not just corruption. It actually, all this stuff actually has a massive impact uh, when it comes to offshore drilling, offshore fracking, uh, natural gas, et cetera. So let's get into the actual, what the reforms actually did and why these people were so game to do this unbelievable, unbelievably crazy corruption here. Well, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it was really smart to bring that up, really important to bring that up because it's not just that. It is, it's, it matters because of uh, overarching reason is climate change. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the parallel uh, ecological reasons matter. So this ushers in fracking in Mexico in the Eagle Ford Shale on, on Mexico side of it. Uh, Eagle Ford Shale fracking is already happening in a huge way in Texas. So this ushers in. That because uh, you know U.S. companies have an expertise in in fracking. They 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 master the technology. They innovated the technology, and that's why the State Department's been the driver of that around the world through a broader program called the Global Shale Gas Initiative, and it's now known as Unconventional Gas Technical Engagement Program. So you can kind of see what's happening in Mexico is just one prong of that. So fracking, of course, now is, could happen in a big time way in Mexico, which is pretty frightening given it, given uh, water shortage issues and um, other issues, you know, uh, in Mexico, farmland issues. Um, but again, besides that, there's also uh, the offshore drilling, as you mentioned. So on the, 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 the Mexico side of the Gulf of Mexico, uh, this could usher in big time deep water offshore drilling. Uh, there's already been one bid that happened in July. And because of low global oil prices, there wasn't much interest yet, um, just because it's an expensive endeavor, and a lot of companies are holding back on uh, buying up new assets right now. Uh, but in the future, uh, it could definitely mean a lot more deep water offshore drilling in Mexico. And I mean, that's important because already one of the comp the, the one company that did put in a bid, uh, a joint venture between uh, Sierra Oil and Gas and a company called Telos Energy. I believe it's Telos who's now embroiled in a big lawsuit uh, over a spill that occurred in 2013 in the Gulf of Mexico. I think I believe on the on the U.S. side of the Gulf of Mexico. And so we're talking about a company that already has a track record of spills. We're talking about the same Gulf of Mexico where the BP Gulf disaster happened. Uh, this this new reform locks in a whole lot more drilling on the Mexico side of the Gulf of Mexico. But I think in, you know, for that, this is all in Mexico, and you know, people in the United States might not care that much about what happens in Mexico because it's not happening here at home. But it does tie back to what's happening uh, at home in the United States because another thing this does is lock in a lot more um, gas that's you know, fracked, for example, in the United States, or oil that's fracked in the United States. It locks in a lot of that oil or gas going into Mexico. So Mexico's electricity grid is now also privatized uh, under this, and um, a big, you know, everything I've been reading shows that a lot of that grid will now be flooded with gas, and that means U.S. fracked gas in large part. Um, a lot of the uh, pipelines are now being built. There's a tra there's a controversial one called the Trans-Picos Pipeline that runs from Texas down to Mexico, and so uh, that's proposed, and that's just one of many. And so we're going to see these impacts not only in Mexico, Gulf of Mexico, but also at home. And of course, this all has a climate change footprint, a major one. And then ecologically, uh, there's well-documented uh, case studies of you know, what fracking has done and what offshore drilling has done. Right, and there's also the fact that <coughs> usually when it comes, and this is something that happens, I think I could safely say, you know, 95% of the time, is when you have these state-run oil, and again, I, I think both you and I want agree that we want the oil drilling to stop. That's something that needs to happen in order to stave off a uh, massive climate disaster. But talking about the privatization of infrastructure and the privatization of industry, where, you, where it's actually going to end up theoretically screwing over the Mexican people because the profits of all of this drilling 
a good percentage of it instead of going back to the country because it was a state-run oil company is actually going to be going to these multinational corporations that are going in there now and so it's sort of you know we don't want the drilling to happen at all but if the drilling is going to be happening instead of the profits actually helping the mexican people uh it's actually going to be helping uh, giant multinational corporations yeah exactly i I, th- I believe it's up to one third of mexico's uh economy in terms of uh you know, revenues generated come uh, was coming from oil and gas industry uh, and pemex or petroleum mexicanos and so I think, I think that's why these big oil and gas interests and big banks like Goldman Sachs, City, City Group, and others were pushing hard to uh, reverse this and privatize the industry so that they could have the lion's share of those profits. And yeah, like you said, um, you know, oil and gas drilling at a massive scale is bad no matter who benefits from it financially, even if a windfall of it does go back to the people, it needs to be slowed down in a major way if we're going to stave off climate change. But you know, at least in the current regime, um, it was helping the people in Mexico a whole lot more than it will in the future under this this current regime. And I, I should mention that banks like BBVA, which is a Spanish bank, they've already touted these uh, this oil and gas privatization as something akin to NAFTA. And so they're very excited about it. And that's something that we should all be really, very frightened by. Yeah, absolutely.